So this video is an essential list of the skills that are gonna help beginner riders feel more confident on their bike. But first, let's start with a really quick bike check to make sure you're starting off on the right foot. It's important to mention that whilst I'm on a very nice flashy bike here, these skills can be done on any bike, hardtail, fully rigid, whatever, however expensive the bike is, same skills apply. So I'm gonna start with checking my tires. You don't need many tools when you're getting into mountain biking, but a good multi-tool and a pump will do most jobs for you. So there's two types of valve on bikes. You've got pressed or Schrader. Uh, Schrader is the car type valve. I've actually got pressed with a smaller, thinner one, and a good pump will have the option to pump up both valves. And I think anywhere between sort of 20 and 25 PSI is good for most beginners. I like to put in slightly more pressure in my rear tire, so up to about sort of 28 PSI. So you'll find that one takes most of the abuse and that's the one that can get pinch punches. Next, make sure you've got your handlebar controls in a really comfortable position so you can use them all the time. So with brake levers, you want to be using two fingers or preferably one because most modern bikes will have powerful enough brakes just to be able to use one finger. So make sure that brake lever is in a super comfortable position, like my relatively high on the bars, just so when I'm in that attack position on the bike, I'm not reaching over to get to them. So they're nice and comfortable. My one finger rests right on the end of that lever for maximum leverage. Top tip, don't over tighten your bolts. It's a beginner mistake I think most of us have made when they start riding. So make sure that you don't over tighten them and risk stripping out those threads on that bolt. Now to get the correct saddle height. So the first thing I do is set it about my hip bone level. Then I jump on the bike and get that final position. So what you want is a slight bend still in your knee when you're pedaling. So that's gonna mean you're comfortable and you're getting the most efficient pedaling stroke. So with my foot in the right position, you can see me pedaling along and still see the sun bend in my knee. The other way to check that is actually by putting your heel of your foot on the pedal and your legs should go just about straight when your heel's there. So when you move your foot back to the right position, you've got that nice bend, nice and high, get the best pedaling position. So I've got a lovely fancy dropper seat post on here. So that's great for riding more technical stuff. I can push the lever, get my seat out of the way. But that's not essential. You can do this with any seat post. You can use a quick release or use an Allen key because getting your saddle out of the way on technical terrain and steep descents is really gonna help. Okay, my bike's ready. Hopefully your bike is ready. Let's talk about some essential skills. Okay, let's start with that neutral stance or the attack position, whatever you call it. Uh, on mountain bike terrain, you're likely to be moving around the bike all the time to maintain steering and traction. And that all comes from standing at all on the bike in that neutral position. So stand nice and tall on the bike with a slight bend in your knees. It should feel like most of your weight is going through your legs, and not up and on your arms. Now this way you're gonna to start to move front to back and side to side on the bike. Right, so jump on your bike and practice a couple of drills. So think about moving your weight around the bike, really front to back, you do that much more than you do side to side. And it's what I call the arc of movement. So there's my neutral stance, ready position. To go to the back of the bike, think about using your feet. So heels down, really drop your hips all the way down to the back tire. Loads of movement there. Then when you go up and forward, think about dipping your toes, but really your shoulders shouldn't come in front of your bars very often at all. That can lead you into a dangerous situation of getting very close to going over the bars. So it's surprisingly important to really practice that, really get a feel for how much you can move on the bike, but also know where your rear tire is so you don't go slamming into it. So you will want to use all that range of movement, but just make sure you're using it at the right times. Because if you're at the extreme back of your bike, let's say when you come down into a dip, a steep downhill, and into that ditch, when you go back up the other side, you've got to move forward. So if you're still at the back, there's a good chance your front wheel can start coming up. So, Extremes of movement 
and then with experience you'll know when to use them. So the ready position gives you a really strong stance and helps you move around the bike and deal with that rough terrain or undulating terrain that you'll find on a mountain bike. And that arc of movement is going to help you with those big ups and downs. A simple way to explain that center of gravity weight thing, so moving around on the bike. When you're in the neutral stance, think about your hips as being that center of gravity. Neutral stance on flat terrain is going to be in the middle of the bike, above the bottom bracket. And when you ride into a downhill section, then you drop your heels and move your hips back. Really, your hips are going to be there again. Your center of gravity is going to be in the middle of the bike. On the opposite end of the scale, riding up a climb, slide into the front of the saddle. Yes, yeah, not going really to be the comfiest, but doing that and dropping your chest, again, it's going to keep your center of gravity balanced between the two wheels. When it comes to pedaling, try and spin circles so you're putting consistent power through the pedals rather than going stomp, stomp, stomp. Couple that with your body movement when it comes to climbing and you'll keep much more traction on the rear tyre and you'll get up the climbs. Spinning circles is relatively easy with clippers pedals, just pull up on the upstroke. But with flat pedals, think about scraping back against your pedal on the upstroke. Seated climbing and spinning nice circles is the best way of maintaining traction on your rear tyre. That's going to work an awful lot, but sometimes you need a bit more power than that to get up a steeper climb. And then you've got to rely on standing up and using more of your muscles, your core muscles and even your arms to get the power through the pedals. To begin with, you have to learn to sort of respect your brakes because whilst they obviously slow you down, they can also lead to big crashes. So feathering the brakes is really important. By that, I mean just really gently modulating them. So pulling them harder when you want to stop slower, but then easing off in situations where it gets more dangerous to use them. For example, corners, when you want to try and come off your brakes as much as you possibly can. Also, you'll start to learn the difference between the front and the rear brake and when to use them. So it becomes absolutely unconscious. You don't really think about it anymore. So especially when cornering, I try and come off the front brake. In the UK, we're on front on the right and back on the left, but that is different most of the rest of the world. But try and learn which one does affect the bike the most. On the flat, the front brake does a lot of the stopping, but when it comes to riding steeper downhills, you have to rely more on the rear brake. But on slippier terrain, or maybe you're cornering where you need more traction, then just ease off them slightly. And that is much easier when you're using just one or two fingers. That also means you've got much more grip on the bars. When you're riding along and hit the brakes, actually all your weight is gonna to start to get sent forward as that force is coming back towards you. So actually your weight goes onto the front wheel and it means that front brake is working very effectively. But a quicker and safer way of stopping is actually thinking about dropping your weight back. So same as before when we think about the arc of movement, just think about dropping your heels. It's gonna bring your hips slightly further back. It's also gonna bring your arms behind the bars and weight behind the pedals. So when you now hit the brakes, it's all gonna go down into the floor and not risk going up and over the bars. That means you'll be able to stop much more safely and faster. The very first time I went out on a mountain bike, I grabbed a handful of front brake in a corner washed out and skinned my knee and that was my first lesson. So you've got to learn to respect the front brake. In the UK, we run our front brake on the right hand side, which I know is different to most of the rest of the world, but it should become a really subconscious thing. Just try and learn which one is your front and back and be careful with that front brake. When riding downhill technical sections, it really is much easier if you can get your seat down and out of the way. So if you haven't got a dropper post, use your Allen key or a quick release. If you have got a dropper, great. You can use that on the fly all the time. It means you can move your hips around a lot more, soak up things like this step. So really let the bike come up to you and then push it down and just stay in a safer position behind the bike. So moving around the bike front to back, side to side is really going to serve you well. But another skill that you can use everywhere is keeping your head up and looking. 
So really that does help with your body weight as well. As soon as you bring your head up, your chest comes back a little bit, puts you in that safer position, but also you can really plan what you're doing. So especially for corners, technical terrain, you really wanna to look to where you want to be because that also works against you. Sometimes you'll see a big tree or a rock or a root that you don't wanna hit. If you look at it, you obviously sort of get drawn in towards it. So try and look at where you want to be. There's also a bit of footwork that can really help with your confidence and traction when cornering. So going from your neutral stance, we've got pedals level. When it comes to cornering, you start dropping your outside foot. That's gonna get your inside foot clear of any obstacles when you dip the bike over, but it's also gonna drop your center of gravity and give you a bit more grip. This set of berms that sort of flow into each other really show the sort of lines you should be using. Try and think about nice, smooth lines so you're not squaring corners off or going inside because that's where you're going to lose traction. So really try and open up the corners, be smooth on your bike, and again, be smooth with your brakes. If you do have to brake, so you're coming down a hill, think about trailing your brakes, so feather them really lightly and then coming off that front brake for grip on that front tyre. So there you go, there's some essential skills for the beginner mountain biker. Think about your neutral stance, standing nice and tall on the bike and keeping your head up. And then moving around that arc of movement, front to back, side to side. Then you start thinking about your braking, feathering, using one or two fingers, and see how each of those brake affects the bike. Also cornering, think about dropping your outside foot, really looking where you wanna go. A great way of practicing all that stuff is to find yourself a big open space, and start moving around, really start doing the extremes, front to back, side to side. Also seeing how each of those individual brakes affect your bike. Also get used to pedaling those nice circles. Uh, once you master these things, you get to the really fun part of mountain biking where you can really progress, start riding more technical stuff. It really opens up the terrain. You can start doing bunny hops, I'm waiting, and that's super fun. If you want to see a couple more how-to videos, if you want to progress a little bit more, click over there for a how-to corner, over there for a how-to bunny hop. Leave some comments, let us know how you're getting on, how you're progressing. Give us thumbs up.